Welcome to Armstrong High School, a picture-perfect afternoon. We've been waiting for this. It's a Northwest Suburban Conference softball on TCX Sports as Osseo pays a visit here to Armstrong. I'm Jay Wilcox, along with former Park Center head coach Kurt Cardinal. And uh, these teams, uh, you know, somewhat similar records, a little bit better for Armstrong, but uh, Osseo's played some good, tough competition, and they said uh, they're, you know, a couple wins, but they feel like things are coming together a little bit for them, too. And on paper, this looks like it could be a, a toss-up kind of game. Yeah, Jay, I'm thinking that this will be a very good game. With the weather, everyone will be excited. Uh, I think the pitching and the hitting are about even on the both both squads. And uh, both coaches have their teams ready to go. And they're both, uh, when I talked to them, they both said they're on the upswing. So we'll see which one keeps going on the upswing today. It's not exactly a secret that it's been uh, less than ideal spring so far. But today, not only the sun and the temperature, but also not the uh, astronomical winds that we've had on a lot of these days recently either. So a uh, lot, lot to like about today for both of these teams. And, uh, you know, kind of finally chipping away and getting some of those games made up from uh, that had to be postponed earlier as well. So they kind of hoping to stay on, uh, on schedule from here on out. You never can say for sure. We could still get some rain, but I think the winter part of the spring season maybe is over, we're hoping anyway. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think that the teams are excited to play in this kind of weather. You can show more of your skills and uh, less of your jackets and your mittens during this kind of a game. And uh, I think that both uh, coaches uh, are comfortable to where their squads are, and we'll see how, uh, how, the, how the day goes. Feels like it's less of an issue to a softball in terms of uh, as compared to baseball when you get games stacked up a little bit. Kids are, uh, you know, fast pitch pitchers are used to throwing maybe multiple games in a day. Even when you're talking tournaments on the way up and everything, it isn't uh, isn't quite the stress and strain on the arm. But you still have to kind of keep an eye on that a little bit too. Yeah, definitely the. Uh windmill motion is a lot less uh, strain on the shoulder than the overhand baseball pitchers are and uh, good pitchers sometimes go two three games in a row without a break we'll take a time out and come back with the start of our ball game here osseo and armstrong on ccx Welcome back here to Armstrong as we get set for the top half of the first. Armstrong getting set to take the field defensively. And Osseo, of course, will be up first as the visitor. And the lineup for Tarek Mori and the Orioles looks like this. Brooke Dobler will lead it off, the third baseman. And then Anna Azure, designated player. Tessa Strand in right. Maddie Deal, the first baseman, hitting cleanup. Megan Wachholz, the left fielder. Julia Wazgott, the catcher. Maya Strumman at second base, Patty Shack the shortstop, and Lindsey Varney in center field for Osseo. Again, they have had some troubles hitting this year, just over 200 as a team, but trying to get things going a little bit here against Armstrong. Defensive alignment for Ariana Crosby and the Falcons. They've got Andy Mizowitz at third base. Shortstop is Lexi Madsen, Alana White at second base. And Claire Riestenberg is the first baseman in the outfield, left to right, Lauren Jones, Elizabeth Bray. And in right field is Maddie Fondo. Julia Gerard is the catcher. And doing the pitching for the Falcons here this afternoon will be Peyton Erickson. Yeah, Peyton's our number one pitcher. She's uh, pitched a lot last year. She's improved her velocity according to coach and uh, has a good mix of pitches. Fastball, change, and drops. So we'll see how she goes today. They're 
There's a strike. Eric's in three and three. He's a pitcher this year and uh, working 39 innings, 17 walks, 26 strikeouts. But Dobler, an interesting one that uh, you had a chance to coach her because uh, she's a, a Park Center athlete, and then for these, uh, they've got a kind of a two-year co-op with us here at the varsity level. And there's mm -hmm. Dobler knocking one into right field. They'll throw to first, but not nearly in time as Brooke beats it out for a base hit here to begin the top of the first for Osseo. Yeah, Brooke's a good hitter. Not so much a speed demon on the bases, but uh, she's a smart base runner and uh, uh, can get herself on base uh, quite a bit. There's a nice hit with two strikes to go to right field. And Azure hitting 160 so far this year. Does have three RBIs and five runs driven in. And you see in these short spring seasons, the average can kind of bounce up and down pretty quick if you have a good week or even a good couple of games. So she's, shown, she's been productive, just uh, average-wise, not quite where she wants it. Lifted out to short center field, and Bray coming on and will make the catch and chases Dobler back to first. So one out here as fly ball to center there. And Tessa Strand will bat now for Osseo. Coach Cosme talked about her outfield being experienced and having some skills and it showed there at the very beginning there that there's a great uh, one step back, a judge the ball and take off hard in to get the catch. I was thinking when I was reading the lineups that uh, it's uh, a very experienced group in the outfield. Seems yep. like those same names have been around for a while. Yep, should be one of their strengths this, this year. Tessa Strand hitting 242. She's knocked in four runs, couple of doubles. And really for Osseo, kind of the same. They have pretty good experience among their outfield group as well. Yeah, I think that uh, Coach Morley mentioned that uh, they have 10 seniors on their team. So they're, they're experienced all on the diamond. Pitch misses away there from Erickson. Down to short. They get one. Really not going to be in time. So strand aboard on a fielder's choice as they force Dobler out at second, 6 4. And Maddie Deal will step up now for Osseo, their first baseman. Maddie hitting 300, a team high seven runs batted in, has one extra base hit. Runner is going, throw down, not in time, not quite held on to anyway. And Strand quickly swiping second. That deal has probably been uh, the Orioles all around strongest hitter so far this year, so it's a good, uh, good spot for an RBI uh, opportunity for her. Look at that play there. They had already called safe, and then the ball was dropped anyhow by shortstop Madsen. Not too often you see a left-handed shortstop. He's a little interesting. No, that tells me that uh, she's a high-level athlete to be able to handle that uh, um, at that position. Chopper off the leg of Deal. I mean, on the one hand, it does give you, you know, you get that glove in the uh, third base shortstop hole. I mean, a lot of balls are hit there. There's uh, it can be a little bit of an advantage in that way, but sometimes, uh, you know, the throwing part of it is why you don't see it as often. That's true, That's true, Jay. I think that especially your second baseman shortstop have to be some of your best, better athletes. Uh, they have a lot of ground to cover and a lot of different responsibilities. Little tapper down to second. And the flip over there from White, and Deal is out. So the Orioles get an early base runner, but unable to do anything with it. No runs, one hit, no errors, and they leave one. So we've completed a half inning here at Armstrong. Osseo nothing, and Armstrong getting set to get their first time with the bats. And the lineup for the Falcons will be... Annalie Walvatny, the DP, leading it off. Then the pitcher Erickson hits second. Lexi Madsen, Madsen, the shortstop, hitting third. Elizabeth Bray in center. And it's Lauren Jones, the left fielder. Claire Riestenberg at first base. Addison Fondo in right field. 
Lena White at second and Maddie Mizowitz at third base. And there's the defensive alignment here for Osio. At Dobler, Shaq, Strumman, and Deal around the infield. Wachholz, Sparney, and Strand in the outfield. Julia Wazgat catching. And doing the pitching for the Orioles is Rachel Evers. Rachel, 3.23 ERA and 56 in the third. She's made nine starts, so pretty much been their, their go-to. Yeah, she, Rachel was their number two pitcher last year, and she's really stepped up this year and taken over the number one spot for the team. Um, she, again, is a contact pitcher, according to Coach, and uh, uses a fastball curve and rise, um, and uh, has kept the ball in play quite a bit this year. I think in, uh, fair to say in recent history, both these programs have been in that similar where they, don't, they haven't had like the overpowering pitchers, but that doesn't mean you can't be an effective pitcher, especially if you can hit your spots. That's true. Keep the ball on the corners and low in the zone, a lot of ground balls, and uh, let your defense do the work behind you. Well, Botney stepping in here. Just had six at bats, looking for her first hit there. And Offered at that one, strike one. Hey, you've done it before, seen it before. Let's go, lock in. Good cut on that one, fouls it back, so quickly 0-2. Pitch, Osio wanted that one, and it's inside. That's a good old two pitch. Close enough, but uh, not in the middle. Popped up, might be playable for the catcher here. Wascott spotted it early and gets to it. Nice job. I'm always kind of amazed. I never, never could figure out how some people find the ball that easily when you're the catcher. Yeah, especially when it goes straight up. Your helmet is blocking your vision once it gets about 10, 12 feet up in the air. And uh, you just have to uh, keep your head going up all the way. She made a nice, uh, nice uh, play over there by the dugout. Peyton Eric's in the batter now. And, and it's kind of one of those things where it makes it look relatively easy if you spot the ball quickly. But if you don't, then it's, then it's not so easy. Erickson, a 375 hitter for the Falcons. Couple of doubles, couple of runs batted in, so not just a good pitcher. She's obviously been a valuable part of their offensive lineup. Where their offensive numbers, a, a pretty big contrast with what you see on Osio's side, but again, you know, some different opponents and things like that, too. But I, I think fair to say they have had a better offensive season than Osio coming in, anyway. Yeah, no doubt up to this point, uh, they've been putting the ball in play quite a bit and uh, hitting the ball hard. Taking low for a ball there. To follow up with that, Coach Crosby told me they spent a lot of time in the offseason working on their hitting for Armstrong, and it appears to have come to fruition here in the spring. And that's low for a ball, and Erickson will work out a walk. So a one-out base runner here for the Falcons. And Lexi Madsen will be the batter now for Armstrong. She's hitting 219, but has walked nine times as well. Three doubles and a home run. Five runs batted in as she fouls this one back. Yeah, she's the epitome of that old saying, a walk's as good as a hit. That one 
and got away a little bit. Runner is going. Here's the throw, and it's going to be in plenty of time to get the out. Erickson tried to dodge the tag, but Waz got coming up throwing, and they got her easily at second there. Yeah, the ball was in the dirt. She made a nice uh, short hop catch and had her momentum going towards second, and obviously she's got a very strong arm as well and hit the shortstop right at the base. And it was interesting. It, it, the pitch got away from Evers. It, um, you, you wouldn't think that would be a good one to throw on necessarily, but Moscott did a tremendous job popping up out of her couch after scooping, and that play was not close. Yeah, she's shown us here in the first inning on that foul ball and on that play there that she is pretty a, a pretty athletic catcher. And I know she did a, a season preview story with them, and at that time she wasn't uh, fully practicing because she had a, a finger injury. So obviously has uh, gotten through that and ready to go for this season. 2-2 two, two count now to Madsen. Base is empty and two outs after that. Caught stealing. Boy, and those feel like bonus outs for the pitcher, too. You know, when you're able to, to get a good defensive play, however it happens, like that, including a caught stealing. And there's a called third strike. Madsen down looking. And Evers works around that walk to get out of the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on. After an inning complete, Osseo nothing and Armstrong nothing here on CCX. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Megan Wachholz stepping in to lead off the top of the second inning here for Osseo. She is their left fielder and number five hitter in the order. Six for 31 as a hitter this year, 194 average. Looks at that one up a little bit against Peyton Erickson. Pound to the second. And they're not going to get a chance to make the play as White unable to come up with that one. So E4 there will get Wachholz aboard. The ball was hit hard on the ground. That's uh, one thing you look for because there's always uh, a chance to take a bad hop, but uh, that was that hit right in the glove. Got to make that play. Looks better. Waz got bunting at foul there. Well, he's got hitting 154, but does have three doubles among her four hits. Squares around, and this time a very good bunt. Throw to first base in time, but gets the runner over. They'll throw back behind. Ooh, and almost had Wachholz rounding a little too far, but she's able to dive back in. So well executed sack bunt there. Runner to second now for Maya Stroman as you get another look. Just did a nice job deadening that ball, making making that really the only play to make the third there. And then that play is close coming back. That was a very nice uh, bunt defense rotation by the Falcons that time. It's one of the ways you can tell teams are well coached on how they rotate on bunt defenses and their outfield uh, cutoff routines. Foul pop, and it's caught. Throw over to third, and good hustle, and looks like they're gonna send Wachholz to the plate. Here's the throw. Not in time, and she will score. Wow, an interesting play as a foul pop out. And then she tags up and will advance on the throwing error. And Osio on the board. That was some very heads up base running. Any, any ball in the air, you go back and tag up, especially foul balls. 
And uh, she forced uh, the Falcons into an error there and got a run all manufactured by herself. Tabby Shack, the batter here for Osseo. 182 average so far this year. So really a, a nice catch there by Riestenberg, but I think she was a little caught off guard by the runner tagging and then the throw over to third, getting away. Yeah, that's one where you hope as a fielder that your teammates are in, in, in bench are helping you out, letting you know what's going on with their voices. Pitch way up high and out of the zone. So Osseo taking advantage of a couple of errors by Armstrong to push that first run across. And a pitch over for a strike. and a miss and Shaq down on strike so Erickson works out of the inning but the Orioles strike first one run no base hits two errors and no one left on as we go to the bottom of two it's one nothing Osseo. CCX Media your source for great local programming is available on Amazon Fire TV Apple TV and Roku our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live you also have access to a large on-demand library including full sporting events and daily newscasts to find us go to the store search CCX and download our free app then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content the CCX Media app available on Amazon Fire TV Apple TV and Roku Bottom of the second here at Armstrong. The four, five, six hitters coming up for the Falcons. Elizabeth Bray, then Lauren Jones, and Claire Reistenberg. First pitch over for a strike from Rachel Evers. Armstrong did get a runner in the first on a walk, but then she was caught stealing Peyton Erickson, so uh, Evers did on, end up only facing three batters total. Gray popping this one, it'll get out of play. Yeah. Didn't see it, but it sounds like a fan made a nice catch there outside the fence. Gray hitting 438 and has knocked in 10 runs for the Falcons. Let's hit that one outside. into this one out to right field and it is gone. Elizabeth Bray going deep here to start the second inning and we're tied at one after her solo shot. Homer number one this year and that one looked pretty good right off the bat. Yeah, it was a little high in the zone and she put a nice swing on it and uh, hit it solid and uh, she's continuing with her hot, hot start to the spring. She's had Four extra base hits. Now let's make it five. We were, we were talking about a couple days earlier this week where we saw some wind aided home runs. But not really the case here today. It's a little bit of a breeze, but I don't think that had any impact as Bray got all of that one. So Lauren Jones will be the hitter, and she's had a good start to the year as well, hitting 406. Homer and 13 RBIs off the pitcher's glove, and no chance. Jones will. Make it to first safely there. I think we'll probably call that one an infield hit. As 
pitcher ever is trying to react, but it went off the tip of her glove. Yeah, that was hit pretty hard up the middle, and uh, he was trying to flag it down at that point when you're maybe 40 feet away after your follow through. So Claire Riestenberg will bat now for Armstrong, 385 average for her, a couple of homers, and, or excuse me, a couple extra base hits and six runs batted in. Looks at a strike here. Good season for their hockey team as well for Claire this winter. There. Getting to the point of the game in the second inning where there's teams have to make two adjustments. One, you have to adjust to the pitcher, and the second one is you have to adjust, adjust to the home plate umpire. This one is well hit to center field, and it is going to drop in. Throw cut off, and there'll be runners at second and third as it just glanced off the glove there of Lindsay Varney in center. What do you think, Kurt? I'm going to put you on the spot. Is that double or an error? Oh, that's a double. Yeah, I agree. She had to turn and go. Yep, I would agree. Maybe Byron Buxton gets that one for the Twins, <laughs> but uh, not uh, not this level. Right. As I just spoke, it looks like uh, Armstrong's made some pretty good adjustments here to the Osseo pitcher at this point. Now it's time for the Osseo pitcher to adjust to them. Madison Fondo stepping in with runners at second and third here for the Falcons. They've tied the game 1-1 on that solo homer and then looking to add more to it here. Fondo hitting 250 on the year, just at 12 at bats. This early in the game, Osseo is keeping the, de the uh, infield defense back here. They're not necessarily, you know, sure thing to come home with a ball hit it hit at them. That tells me that uh, coach thinks that uh, they're going to they're going to put some runs on the board during the game. That's a strike. There's some teams and some pitchers where you know the most you're going to score is one or two runs, and you got to play play the game to to that level. Others, you th where you think you're going to score, you can be a little bit uh, less aggressive early in the game. Another strike on the outer part of the plate. And I feel like early in the game, too, you, you kind of want to limit the really big innings by balls getting through. And um, I, I don't disagree with this strategy at all for us here. here. And a little flare in the short right. It's going to drop in. And a run will score. And there'll be runners at the corners. Just kind of an unfortunate one for Osio. A little tweener that nobody could get to. Fondo blooping that one in. And Jones got kind of a late start from third, but still no real chance to get a play on her. Yeah, that was just in the right spot. And... Uh... Put the bat on the ball. A lot of times good things happen. Two to one Armstrong as Elena White steps up. We'll see if with first and third, Armstrong is going to get something going on the bases. Maybe try and draw a throw and score that run. White, one for 13 as a hitter so far this year. She appears to be adjusting because uh, this umpire has a rather low strike zone, so that's where you're going to get the majority of your strikes if you hit the spot. There's a strike. Rondo staying put at first base, although she's dancing off. I think maybe trying to draw a throw a little bit, but they don't want to give up and out, especially the way they've been hitting, too. I think they want to give their hitters a chance to swing the bats. A little soft flare down to second. They'll get the out at second. A run scores as White will reach on a fielder's choice there. Just a little spinner down to second. They force Fondo out, but no real chance to get the uh, double play here. So give White an RBI. On this one, throw is a little high there. For a moment, I'm thinking, oh, did she hang on to the bag? But the ruling was yes. That was a smart base running play to stop it. 
Maddie Mizowitz, the number nine hitter, fouls this one down the right field line. Yeah, you're right. You don't want to run right into a double play there. Yep, that's, that was a well, well coached uh, base running play there. And sometimes it's kind of a quick reaction thing, too, because sometimes you're thinking, well, if I can get past her quick, maybe I can make it and all that. But it was uh, definitely the right idea. It was also a little bit of probably a thought of, you know, is there a chance she might catch this in the air? So I don't want to leave too early in that way either. A little roller to third. This might be a tough play. Throw across is in time. Nice strong throw to get the out there. Runner White will move up to second. So two outs now, and they'll come back to the top of the order while Vanti will be the batter. That was uh, those little slow tappers. It was almost like a swinging bunt there, but good job to come up throwing there by Dobler. Yep, she's known for a strong arm. Well, Vanti fouled out to the catcher, Wazgat, in her first at bat, so 0 for 1. Falcons now leading 3 to 1 as they had four hits to begin the inning, starting with a solo homer by Bray. And have put three runs on the board so far. Knocked down to second. And flip to first, and we'll get Walvante. But a good inning for Armstrong as they do come up with three runs in the inning on four base hits. No errors in one left on. We've completed two innings, Armstrong three and Osseo one. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button and from there choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Lindsay Varney stepping in to lead off the top of the third for Osseo. Her team now trailing three to one as Peyton Erickson delivers a strike to begin the inning. It's always important for a team that just gave up, uh, for example, three runs there to get something going this year inning, even if they don't score, get some players on the bases and, and uh, keep the lineup moving. Little tapper foul there by Barney. Three for 26 as a hitter this year is Varney. Popping this one foul, and it will get out of play over into that fan group down the first base side. Looks like the fans down there are enjoying the day as well. I see a lot of short sleeves and uh, a lot of uh, comfort uh, going on in their lawn chairs down there. And not surprisingly, the crowd seemed to get a little bigger as the weather gets a little nicer. I mean, mom and dad, maybe grandparents are probably going to come anyway regardless, but you see a little more uh, people getting out of work early and coming over to watch the... Yeah, uh, softball. That one is on the inside corner for a called third strike as Barney caught looking. Second strikeout for Erickson. Top of the order now for Osseo. Brooke Dobler is the batter. Another look at this pitch there. Working in at her there. Dobler out of single her first time up. Yeah, 
Coach Mori has indicated that Dobler has been a good addition to the defense and uh, expects her to be able to pick up her offense as the year goes by. Yeah, she's had some pretty eye-popping numbers for, for your uh, Park Center team in the past couple of years. I know that. Yep, she was a keeper, no doubt. Driving this one out to left, and it's going to drop in. And that one, they were maybe respecting her power a little bit because they had generally, a, a lot of the hitters been playing fairly shallow. Not quite the case there. And just a little bit too far to run to, uh, to get to that one for Lauren Jones. And so Anna Azure will be the batter here for Osseo. Takes a strike. Hit the ball pretty decent that first inning, but fly to center. And turns on this one and rips it into left field for a base hit. And so back to back singles with one out here for Osseo. And two on for Tessa Strand, their right fielder, much like we said with Armstrong starting to zero in on Evers a little bit. This inning, Osseo hitting some balls hard. Yeah, looks like they're adjusting as well. Strand reached on a fielder's choice her first time up. And trying to bunt that one. Good idea, a little anxious though. That was a tough, tough pitch to get on the third base line there. Squaring again, takes it for a ball. <laughs> Trying to bunt, but fouls it away. Bunt probably off now, although not a sure thing. I did see somebody a two-strike bunt the other day in the Hopkins Mankato West team. And all confidence in the world got it down easily. Yeah, you do catch him off guard when he's bunt with two strikes. 3-2. And fouled away. So quite a battle here between Erickson and Strand. An important situation here. Two runners on, one out. Erickson wins the battle, then she's got her second out of the inning, but Strand trying to really keep the turnstiles moving. Pop up on the infield here, and White will make the catch. So two gone now, and Maddie Deal will step up for Osseo. The first baseman, Maddie Deal. Deal grounded second in her first at bat. Coming up in a key RBI opportunity. And we said that overall as a team, they've struggled this year, but she's probably been their most potent hitter. Seven runs batted in. Yeah, and she's uh, impressed them at the next level, too. She's committed to Augsburg to play softball next year, so that would be a good chance to put a couple more RBIs on their ledger. Popping it up. Out to right field, Fondo coming on and will make the catch wisely with sunglasses on there. That one could have been trouble. No runs, two hits, and two left aboard here for Osseo. And the third it is 3 to 1 Armstrong here on CCX. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I played JV basketball. I'm sorry. I don't think it looks right. This is good, and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? 
If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm gonna call my dad. Rachel Weber is completing her warm-up tosses for Osseo here as we go to the bottom half of inning number three. Armstrong will have the two, three, four hitters coming up. And you can look at some of this good crowd on hand here. And I always feel like the, the time of the year is best in spring or fall when you don't really need the heat on and you don't yet need the AC on either. And that's sort of where we're at this week. Yep, Minnesotans are loving this, no doubt. Erickson walked her first time up. Sky high pop up here. Shaq staying with it and will make the grab for the Orioles as they get a quick out here to begin the third. And Lexi Madsen will step in. Looks like Evers uh, made an adjustment there for that in last inning. It's, I think she started her off with a change up there and got, got her out in front of it. And uh, maybe we'll see more of that as the inning goes by. Yeah, they hit her pretty hard in that second inning. It started with the homer to right by Bray, but and, uh, had a single and a double after that, and then another single by Fondo. So they uh, had a good inning, and obviously she's hoping to you know, stem the tide a little bit here from here on. All the way by Madsen. Yeah, the Orioles offense has shown they'll get, get some runners on base, so you just have to Try to keep the Falcons here at three and uh, hope your offense can get it going the next time. I think as a pitcher too, you kind of try to have a short memory. I mean, you, you don't want it to build on itself. If, the, if you see a couple balls hit hard against you, you the, the good ones are the ones that can kind of shake that off and just get back to work. Yeah, that's exactly right. Short memory for pitchers. to the varsity level in the Northwest Suburban. And I mean, obviously there's exceptions, people who can you know, strike out 17 or whatever, like you saw at Maple Grove game. But uh, for the most part, you're gonna have to expect to get hit a little bit. And that's something that I think some you know, younger pitchers have to learn. There's a little flare right to Dobler there, soft liner by Madsen, two out, and Elizabeth Bray will be the hitter. And she went deep her first time up. And we'll see how Evers approaches her now, this inning. But you're right about pitchers. I mean, yeah, even the best are going to get hit. It's more, it's more about how you come back. Here's what Bray did last time up. That was leading off the last inning. And a little bit over the fence and right. There's a strike. Outside corner, good placement. Lift that one up and out of the zone, one and one. This one well out to center field, and that one goes. Drove it out to right in the second inning, and now here in the third, a homer to straightaway center, Elizabeth Bray, having herself an afternoon here. Well, Evers made the adjustment and moved to the outside part of the plate, but uh, Bray just took her that way and showed power to center field as well to check the CCX truck for a dent in it. I was, I was thinking that along the way. There was a lot going into that one. Would it clear the fence? And then secondarily, would it uh, drill that uh, truck? So a four to one lead now for Armstrong and Lauren Jones will be the hitter.
popping this one up. Wascott, the catcher, again getting out of her couch to make the play. But Armstrong adds a run and another homer for Elizabeth Bray. One run, one hit, and no one left on base. After three complete, Falcons leading at four to one. out there you see with those great classes and uh, came over last year and took over this Osseo program. <laughs> Megan Wachholz will step in to lead it off here for the Orioles. A five, six, and seven hitters. So they've got a little bit of work to do as they now trail four to one, but they've gotten some base runners here against Erickson. They're trying to see if they can't uh, string a little more together. In on the hands and a pop up to second. White will squeeze that one for out number one. Wazcott will be the batter here for Osseo. Laid down a very good sacrifice bun her first time up. This time hitting with the bases empty. Notice that Erickson has, has done a little bit better job the last couple of innings moving the ball in and out, up and down, and uh, even front to back with some different different speeds. Yeah, we talked earlier, or I did anyway, about location, but that change of speeds is also a big thing. You don't want the hitter to get really grooved in to, to where they're timing everything on you. And a check swing, and that one's going to be another one right to the second baseman White as she'll make her second. Catch in a row here, begin the fourth, and Stroman will be the batter here for Osseo. That's a perfect example of just, just talking about Jay. Is she got out in front of that one a little bit and didn't want to complete her swing because she knew she was early, but just couldn't stop him. Easy out for the Falcons. Interesting, we talked about the right fielder having sunglasses, the second baseman, White, electing not to go with them, although she does have a visor. Didn't seem to have any trouble sunwise on that one though. I, I feel like some people, I mean, uh, just people in general, not necessarily just softball players, really like wearing sunglasses on a day like today and some don't. I, I've you know, run across players that, given their preference, really wouldn't wear them. Yeah. They don't feel like they see it as well. Yeah, they had some, some, some glasses uh, make it a little bit too dark and uh, just don't feel comfortable. Lots of sun out, but maybe block out your other vision as well. Following this one back. Let's see, this one's gonna get out onto the backstop. <laughs> Catch her tripped a little bit there. She was trying to get back there. Garage getting up and we were close enough we could hear her. She said, oh great, that's on TV. <laughs> we took a pretty good header there and having some fun with the umpire and with her pitcher. And no harm done. The good part is she was actually probably glad to see that it ended up out of play because if it landed next to her and she didn't catch it, it would have felt worse about that. Yeah, that would have been doubly embarrassing. Another one, but this one will get way back out of play. Well, Erickson's got a chance here if she can 
put this uh, batter out and get a 1-2-3 inning and keep the momentum on her team's side with the getter, hitters back into the dugout pretty quickly. It's one way a pitcher can uh, help the hitters out is when we're hitting, hitting the ball well, get us back in the dugout quickly. Yeah, we haven't had a 1-2-3 inning yet by either pitcher, although Armstrong did only end up batting three in the first, but they did have a runner reach. A little pop up. And staying with it nicely there over at third base is Mizowitz. And so three pop-ups for the Osseo batters in the fourth. No runs, no hits, and no one left on. We go to the bottom of four. Armstrong leading at four to one. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Welcome back here on the right there, Ariana Crosby, the Armstrong head coach. Sixth season, she was a heck of a player for the Falcons back in the early part of the 2000s, I think graduated in 2007. And she's done a very nice job since she's taken over here of getting this program going. She uh, told me last night that uh, she just loves her, loves her team and uh, she and her staff are honored to be working with uh, such dedicated and uh, Nice young ladies, so got a good culture here at Armstrong since Ariana's been, been with the team. And kind of solidified. They went through quite a few head coaches for a stretch there, too, and, and uh, I think it's just been a little bit of continuity and solidifying things a little bit, too. And they, had, they also had a few that weren't, um, you know, in the buildings during the day as school district employees during the day, which, uh, you know, see, that's not always a bad thing, too, but... Um, I think that, you know, it's going to be a good mix to, to get her into that position and their staff is a good one as well. Riestenberg is the hitter to start the fourth. She had a double to center her first time up as it just tipped off the glove of the center fielder, Varney. Change up here. Dobler gunning it across. Nice job to cut that one off. If that gets by her, that's going to be a hit, even if the shortstop was able to field it, I think. It, 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 obviously, those are the type of plays that, if possible, you want the third baseman to make just because they're able to cut that off and be heading toward first with that strong throw. Yeah, you always want your third baseman to range as far to his or her left as you can. And uh, the ones that have the confidence to do that uh, certainly help your shortstop out quite a bit. Maddie Fondo, the batter here for Armstrong, takes a strike. She had an RBI single in the second, part of that good inning for them. They had a three-run inning. A basketball player for them in the winter. On the plus side forever, she has retired the leadoff hitter three of the four innings. The the one exception, though, was a big one. That's a little homer by Bray leading off the second. But that's usually, you know, a good sign to start an inning when you can get that first hitter. It takes a little bit of pressure off, but it hasn't always worked out that way for her. There's a strike. Well, she's probably feeling pretty comfortable as long as uh, Bray isn't in the batter's box. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, she might come out of this game saying, well, if it, dang, if it wasn't for that number 12, I would have had a, a pretty good game going. A couple of homers by Elizabeth Bray in her first two at-bats. And that one hit her foot. Fondo will be aboard. So a one-out base runner here for the Falcons, and White will be the batter. This one coming in on her there and hits that back leg, shin. A 
White reached on a fielder's choice. Her first time up, knocked in a run. Oof, change up out in front, throw down to first, and Fondo diving back in. And Deal keeping that tag on just in case Fondo relaxed and took her hand off. Coach Cosme mentioned to me that Elena's going to St. Olaf next year and she's going to be part of the choir there. That one is over for a strike. You know, sometimes the thing you forget about a little bit with seniors in spring sports is a lot of them are starting to think about that next thing. And you, know, you give credit to the ones that can really stay focused here in the you know final weeks or final month of their high school time. Because I know uh, you're starting to think about summer and also, again, like I said, if you're headed, headed to, to college. Yeah, as coaches in the business call that the uh, senior spring slide. And teachers know what I'm talking about too, obviously. <laughs> Pops this one up. Could be a difficult one. It's gonna drop in, but they might still have to play at second and they will. So Fondo is forced out. That one was sh high enough that it sh probably should have been caught, although they didn't panic and still get that lead runner. That's a tough spot when you're that runner on first, too. You can't stray off too far, and that she's expecting this might be caught. Yeah, you're in no man's land there. You have a tough, tough, tough time judging it, and the right fielder was close enough to the ball that if she made the catch, you're going to be out at first, and if she doesn't, you're going to be out at second. So pick your poison. Mizowitz the hitter here, and fouls that one away. She bounced to Dobler at third her first time up, so 0 for 1. Maddie's another one of her seniors got her, got her plans for to play softball at Iowa Central Community College in Iowa, which is a very strong uh, junior college team and, and conference as well. A lot of players from that conference end up going to either NAIA, Division II, or Division III teams after their two years in, in the community college. Down to short. Shaq has to charge it and throw across is in time, and the Falcons are done in the fourth. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on after four full. It is Armstrong four and Osseo one. First generation Filipino American. You don't always feel you're a part of the country you live in. It's this weird middle space sometimes that you have to, to live inside of. But when you meet others that are also living in that space, you'll learn to know that that it's its own unique space too. Welcome back here to Armstrong as the Falcons leading it by a score of four to one. Let's see what Erickson has done so far today. Patty Shack leading it off here. The 8-9-1 hitters for Osseo. I mentioned last inning that Mizowitz is going to Iowa Central next year. Shack here is committed to Iowa Lakes. Another community college and then same conference. So they'll see each other next year across the diamond. I think it's a big inning for Osseo. I'll try to get the bottom of the order on and have the top of the order get him back in the game. Oh, 
traditional pop up here. And the second baseman, White, has had a pretty busy afternoon. She caught two pop-ups last inning and to start the fifth, grabs another. Lindsay Varney, the hitter now for Osio. Took a called third strike her first time up. And now 2-0. Top of the order coming next. You know that uh, Erickson would really like to get Barney here and not, not put her aboard. That one's over as well, 2-2. Two and two. It's like Erickson's done a nice job this game of uh, proving the inside corner for herself and uh, seems to be going back to the well there whenever she needs to. That time a little too far inside, so the count running full now to the Orioles center fielder. And that'll be a third strike, so. Gets Varney for the second time on strikes today. Third strikeout for Erickson, and now Dobler will be the hitter. Kind of had some indecision there. Offered at that one. Dobler two for two here today. And on the right field line, it's going to be foul. Seen a couple of home runs today from Armstrong Gray. Dobler is definitely someone capable of driving one out of here as well. I did see plenty of those when uh, she was at, at Park Center and I was there with her. Ooh, a rope hit to center, and it's going to get past Bray. Dobler will have at least two, and she'll check in there at second base with a hard line drive double. Well, you know you've hit it hard when it, the center fielder can't even cut it off before it uh, gets past her. Bray's a pretty good outfielder, and even she was surprised by how fast that ball got on her there. Yeah, that was, that was a rope. I think Brooke's going to want me to come back and watch a few more of her games the next uh, couple of weeks here. Azure will be the hitter. And a pop up here, and it's going to be the shortstop going back to make the grab, Madsen. And so they work around the double for Osio in the fifth. No runs, one hit, and one left aboard. We go to the bottom of five. Falcons still leading at four to one. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Bottom of the fifth, and Lily Nering will step in to lead it off here, batting in the number one spot that Wabanti had been hitting in. Nering looks like she uh, 
has been in the lineup quite often this year. She's had 32 at bats, hitting 281. Pulled the bat back, takes it for a ball. Again, squaring and takes it for a ball. See ever so far what she has done through four. Ever looks true to form. Not have any strikeouts. Not many walks. Let the ball get put in play. Nearing takes that one up and out of the zone. And ball four. So Nearing works out a walk to begin the fifth. Erickson will be the hitter. It'll be interesting now to see if uh, Coach Crosby plays for a run here with a sacrifice, thinking that uh, a total of five might be enough, or if she's going to go for a big, another big inning. This spot in the order up, I'm thinking they probably will not run here, but I've been wrong before. <laughs> Takes it for a ball. Erickson, a walk, and then a pop to short. over for a strike. And low for a ball there. Erickson will be followed by Madsen and then Bray. So they've got a good part of their order to try and add to the lead here. Here's a strike. I don't want to state the obvious, but it appears the strike zone has changed the last two innings or so. The high strike is getting called a lot more often than it did the first three innings. I was just going to say, you could kind of tell by the look on Erickson's face that she was like, she didn't complain, she didn't turn around, but you could tell she thought that might have been up that uh, previous strike. Three and two. Lifting it out to right field and catch made there for out number one. And Nearing has to retreat back to first. And Lexi Madsen will be the hitter. Big out to get there. Madsen 0 for 2, took a call third strike and then lined out to the third baseman. Nearing looks like she's pretty quick down there, and for a moment looked like she might take off, and Lazgat was ready too. Slashing it foul down the left field line. Moscow with a nice pick up there. Elizabeth Bray on deck and Osio would like to end the inning with her still over there after the first two at bat she's had. 
Taking up high for a ball. Still only one out though, so if that were to be the case, it would be the only way that could happen is if Madsen hit into a double play. And right now she's ahead in the count, 3-1. Lifting it out to center field. It'll be playable though. Marnie with the catch and two outs. And now Bray will bat. Here's what she did to start the second inning. Jumped on one and drives it out to right field. And for good measure, an inning later, goes to center. That must mean she only has left field left and she's got the trifecta, huh? Takes a strike here. Yeah, first base was open. They may consider just putting her on, but I guess in this spot probably won't. Oh yeah, I think you're, you're exactly right. For sure, it's Dave Walker. First base was open. A little soft liner and it's gonna sneak through. And it'll be a single, so not as hard hit as her first two at-bats, but it's still another base hit for Bray as she got it over the pitcher. And then it just kind of slowly spun past second base. And no opportunity for any of the fielders to get to it. Jones will be the batter. Well, Jones leads the team in RBIs, so Bray's left her some people out there to knock in. Two on and two out. That one is a strike. Jones one for two today. Coach Crosby said that uh, Lauren is the most improved hitter this year. She's always been good on defense, she said, but uh, her hitting has come around a lot this year. Yeah, I remember that from the past. I mean, you don't always think of like left field as one of your prime defensive positions, but she is been good enough both as catching the ball and as a thrower that it, you know you can be a weapon as a left fielder especially when you have contact pitchers you need... popped up foul dobler is going to get over there and make the catch so good work by evers to get out of trouble there no runs one hit no errors and two left on for armstrong we've completed five full here in northwest suburban softball falcons four orioles one CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. You are loved. You are valued. You are resilient. <laughs> you got this. You are there for them. We are here for you. Find free care guides mm -hmm. at AARP. Dot org slash caregiving. Peyton Erickson in the circle as Tessa Strand steps in to lead off the top of the sixth for Osseo. A couple more at bat for the Orioles to battle back into this when they're down four to one. Strand 0 for 2 today. Max a foul on the third baseline. Low and away with that one. Well, in this situation, you want to, don't want to walk the leadoff hitter. And you're ahead by three runs and... And that one... 
caught the umpire, I think, on the high pitch, and Strand will be aboard. Umpire can take his base, too. That one kind of stunned him a little bit off the mask as it got over the catcher. So Maddie Deal will hit with the leadoff hitter Strand reaching there via the walk. It's actually the first walk given up today here by Erickson. Strike, runner is going. The throw is not held. Would have been out, I think, but unable to hang on to it there. Shortstop Madsen, so Strand will end up with a stolen base. It looked like the throw was in time, but and Madsen is hurting a little bit. Talked earlier in the game about uh, left-handed shortstops. There's where it was a hindrance to be a left-handed shortstop. You have to bring the tag all the way across your body. Strand was a little Ty Cobb-like there coming in high with it. <laughs> and Madsen a little shaken up. Have to take a look and see if she's got the metal spikes on or if she's got the rubber ones on. You can use you can use metal. Well, maybe that'll be the spark that uh, Osio needs to put a little rally together here in the sixth inning. And you said Deal has been one of their most dangerous and probably the most dangerous hitter so far this year. Down the right field line. Catch is made. Strand will tag and go over to third, but Osseo, or Armstrong, excuse me, at this uh, scenario will definitely take that, allowing that base runner to move over to get the out. Good heads up base running again. Uh, Osseo had one earlier on a foul ball in the infield where they advanced, this time down the right field line. Wachholz will be the batter. Runner at third with one out. Rockholz, after reaching on an error in the second, came around to score. She was the runner on that foul pop that was caught and went out, you know, surprised them by going to third, and then the throw got away, and she quickly bounced up and raced home, too. And neither was a real obvious situation to advance, I don't think. And uh, she was aggressive and got them going. Yep, sometimes you're rewarded for being aggressive and sometimes you run yourselves out of an inning, but she definitely manufactured that run for them that time. Now she's got a chance to get a run for them the old-fashioned way with a hit to the outfield. To short, ooh, it took a hard hop there. Throw to first is in time. Now the runner coming home is gonna be in safely. So Strand will score on the play. Lockholtz out six to three, but we'll get an RBI there. As a nice job to stay with that one. Keep in mind, Madsen just a moment ago got spiked at second, and then this one took a, a bad hop, and it was a good play to not only stay with it, but to have enough on that throw to get the out. Yeah, especially as a left-hand shortstop, she had to make the turn there and, and uh, showed off a cannon there from short. Was got the hitter, and again, well done base running wise for Wachholz there. You want to time that one right so that you you don't get caught coming home. If the uh, you know if you if you take off instantly, the shortstop presumably would have had a play possibly at home. Instead, uh, made made them make the play, and they get the out again. Armstrong though, when you have a three run lead, you trade that out. Even though they get a run out of it, it's it's a smart play to make sure you get the out at first. You, once in a while, you'll see teams that you know they get too caught up in trying to make sure that run doesn't score, and they they end up not getting the out at all. Right, you'll definitely try and change exchange out for out for run now, one run, two outs, bases empty. They have to hit several hits in a row to score again this inning. And also going to be the bottom part of their order coming up, which is something you kind of keep in the back of your head, too, that, um, you know, yes, we've given up a run this inning, but we've worked our way through the heart of their order, too. Hard hit to third. Nice pickup, though. Mizowitz throwing across. Well done defensively there twice in a row for Armstrong. Osio, though, chips away at the lead. One run, no hits. No errors and none left. It's four to two as we go to the bottom of the sixth.
four to two lead for Armstrong as we go to the bottom half of inning number six here on CCX Sports. And here's what's coming up. Telecast uh, will be back here at Armstrong on Monday for our girls lacrosse and our OPC taking on Armstrong. And we got uh, softball action on Tuesday as Chaplin Park goes to Tino Grace. And then uh, what should be a good boys lacrosse middle of next week here as Maple Grove and Armstrong tangle. And Beyond that, some baseball odds here, Maple Grove. Looking forward to that uh, Totino Grace Champlin game next Tuesday under the lights at uh, Chamber Park High School. Hopefully, we'll get a nice evening like tonight for that game. And Kurt, we were talking earlier that you were at Park Center, but you have uh, involvement in uh, Champlin Park softball before that. Daughter played there, and you got something pretty big coming up Friday night. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, tomorrow night we're. Uh, Stealing from uh, ESPN and the NBA, where they have their top 75 players in the first 75 years. We're having the top 30 players in the first 30 years of Champlain Park Rebels fast pitch. And we are inviting them all to the game tomorrow night. We'll have a ceremony. We'll be bringing back all the varsity coaches from the, from the 30 years of Rebels fast pitch and uh, recognize the top players that have been there. There have been quite a few... Uh, Really good players, and uh, to make the top 30 is uh, quite an honor. So we're looking forward to that tomorrow night. Claire Reistenberg will step in to lead off the bottom half of the sixth for Armstrong. She had a double in the second. And a little soft pop-up. Shortstop Shaq will make the catch. And we're going to have a pinch hitter now for Armstrong as Sam Lind will bat for Fondo here. Sam Lynn's got a 385 batting average, so coming off the bench, it's a pretty good stick to try to get something going here. Hard hit to short, but Shaq up with it, and we'll throw across to get the out. So two gone here in the sixth, and White will be the batter now for Armstrong. That's what you want out of your, your pitcher and defense here if you're Osseo. You know, you chip away, you get within a run. You'd like to kind of keep some momentum getting them. Yeah, you'd like to keep them here, uh, finish his inning off with no runs for Armstrong. Because we all know that... Uh, the game changed a little bit in the seventh inning of a close game, both for hitters, pitchers, and fielders. So the seventh inning is a different animal. To short again. Busy inning for Shaq. Catches a pop-up and then two bouncers, and it's a quick inning. No runs, no hits, no one left. We go to set the seventh. Armstrong leading Osseo 4 to 2. One more chance for the Orioles. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. We go to the seventh inning here, a four to two lead for Armstrong. Strumman stepping in to lead it off. Seven, eight, nine hitters coming up for Osseo.
will pop up, and Mezowitz trying to get to it, but couldn't quite make it. Not quite uh, high enough in the air for her to make it all the way there before it hit the ground. And you're, you're, I'm not in any way saying that he was in the way, but you're, you're out of the corner of your eye, you're seeing that their base coach there as well, and I think that probably makes you hesitate just a little bit. Those are the kind when you're a hitter, you're like, get down, get down, get down. You don't want to, <laughs> you know, kind of feel like you gave up in a bat with a... Right, you feel, you know. feel like you get cheated a little bit. Yep. This one lifted out to left, long run for Jones, and she dives and gets it. What a catch by Lauren Jones to start the seventh. We talked about it earlier about her being an excellent defensive left fielder, and it shows up late in the ball game. And that's key, especially for the lead up with the lead up in her. You, you're Oslo, you get that gets down, uh, you got to feel like you got a little bit of life coming up here, but that uh, kind of sucks. It sucks some of the life out of you there with the first out being a great defensive play. Shaq, the batter here, starts with a changeup taken up high for a ball. She's 0 for 2. Watch Jones again here, coming hard to get this one. Really laid out, too. A lot of times that ball will pop out when your body hits the ground. Here's a pop-up, and the pitcher Erickson will squeeze this one for out number two. You're right, Jay. She had to squeeze that one because she was at full run and uh, laid herself out uh, vertically to catch, the, horizontally to catch that ball and uh, hit the ground hard. Olivia Techum is going to step in to pinch hit here in the number nine spot after Barney had struck out a couple times. Techum just 0 for 1 as a hitter this year. Nobody on, two outs here in the top of the seventh, and there's a strike. This one back and out of play. And that one gets away from Erickson a little bit. Might as well work at least one pitch while you're when you're ahead 0-2. And same thing again there. Two balls and two strikes. Top of the order would be up next. I think Erickson would like to go right after Tecum and see if she can end it here. Tap or foul off of Tecum's leg. Yeah, especially with Dobel on the on-deck circle. She's three, three today, and she's got the power to try the game up if there's a runner on base. Taking low for a ball, and the count will run full now to the pinch hitter, Techum. Last out, sometimes the hardest one to get. And a swing and a miss, and Techum down on strikes as Erickson ends it in style here for the Falcons. As a one, two, three, seventh inning, and a nice performance by Erickson and her teammates. Obviously, Bray with the two homers, but uh, all around, I thought they played a solid game. It looked good in the field, too. Yeah, they sure did. I thought both teams uh, um, played good, solid ball, and uh, both should feel comfortable with their output today and uh, I know that Armstrong's got another game tomorrow and Osseo's heading up to Duluth on Saturday to get some ball in. They'll probably see the cold weather there again in Duluth. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this one and thanks so much for watching Northwest Suburban Softball here on CCX. For Kurt Cardinal and all of our crew, MJ Wilcox, your final score is Armstrong 4 and Osseo 2.